Bitcoin has seen over a 10% drop in the last couple of days. We've also seen bearish divergence now flash up on the charts as Bitcoin starts to take this tumble to the downside. We are going to be jumping down into the technical analysis on a Bitcoin today, taking a look at the one hour, one day and one week's time frame, sharing my thoughts and opinions on where I think Bitcoin is heading next. As I get into today's video, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new, subscribe. Let's roll that intro and get right down into it. Okay, guys, we're going to kick things off right here with Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We're using the Binance one hour time frame chart for this. Um, and as you can kind of see here, we are still tracking a move to the downside. Now, we'll take a look at this in a little bit more detail. It does look like we could potentially have just truncated here, meaning that we fell a little bit short of our target range. Okay, so we're looking for a five wave drop. Now, it's possible, of course, that we overextend and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I want to kind of keep this quite open uh, to a couple of different scenarios that could can unfold here um, because it is still all looking quite bearish. I don't think we're necessarily mo finished moving to the downside. I'm going to walk you through why I think this uh, on this one hour time frame, right? So Elliott Wave Theory is basically predicting that we should still be targeting out this move at 39,128 to 39,901. However, our five wave count can be complete here, meaning that our internal five wave structure for the fifth wave movement, one, two, three, four, and five could be complete, meaning that our fifth wave has has basically just finished here. Okay, now we overextend, which would be a potential scenario, uh, meaning that this fifth wave is going to drop down so much further than we have seen so far. Okay, and in that scenario, we'll be looking for our next target to exceed the lows. Okay, and that would basically be looking at pushing us down towards 38,408. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line right here. And what I'll do is I'll tag this up um, as a 1.618 target. Okay, so I'll remove the fibs just so you can kind of see that if we are to overextend this fifth wave, we're going to have to come down quite deeply here. Um, it would basically be insinuating we have a wave one, a wave two. This would be our wave three would bounce and then we'd drop down again, seeing this overextension. Now, I don't like overextensions, um, but they do occur from time to time. So in an ideal world for me right now, I would be looking at this being our fifth wave complete. We then actually look for a move upwards, okay, starting to get those balls back rallying in starting to think oh it was just a it was just a fake crash nothing to worry about and uh, you know the, a lot of people will start layering in their long positions and starting to think that you know the market is going to be going up into a new yearly high whereas in reality what's going on here is it's a, a, a relief rally that's going to collapse back down so I want to be quite mindful over that and um, so as we can kind of see here a truncated move would be ideal because it will allow us to move up a bit but if we do overextend we're going to see a lot more damage before we get that relief rally and um, so two things are on the horizon here now for us we're going to wait for confirmation anything higher than our swing high at 42,550 is going to confirm that we're in that relief rally anything lower than the existing swing low at 40,222 then we are likely to move on down towards our target anything lower than 39,128 puts me in that overextension scenario where we target out 38k so we've got a lot of things going on here on the one hour time frame from an Elliott Wave theory point of view. But what about smart money concepts? Well, smart money concepts puts us in a bearish structure as well. Okay, so we were in a bullish pattern. We are now in a bearish pattern. We can also see that we got rejected on equilibrium with our moves to the upside yesterday, and we started to move back down again uh, from there. You can also see uh, outside of smart money concepts that we are below the 50 EMA, that's the red line, below the 50 SMA, that's the yellow line, and we are below the 200 EMA, that's the white line. There's also a death cross here on the one hour time frame with the 50 SMA looking to cross down lower than the 200 EMA. As we can see, these are upper areas of resistance. Let me zoom right in here so you guys can see. Okay, not only are all of our EMAs 
coinciding with our equilibrium area. This is a previous area of resistance. 200 EMA has been rejecting price at the moment. Uh, this is basically going to be our next area of rejection, right on the 50 EMA, 50 SMA, 200 EMA, this range and this equilibrium. Okay, so this at the moment, 200 EMA sitting at 42,369. You have the 50 SMA sitting at 42,532, and then you have the 50 EMA sitting at 42,305. Now, all of those are going to be heavy resistance along with the equilibrium at 42,350, uh, upwards towards the 42,540. Okay, so we know that there's so much resistance right up in here. Previous areas of, um, of price action as well coming up into this resistance. So if we do push up any higher, it's going to find heavy resistance here. We can also note that we're overbought on the hourly chart once again, so suspect further to the downside to a occur here on BTC. Ultimately, there isn't a lot of positivity to be seen on this smaller time frame of the hourly chart right now. Ultimately, we're just looking to kind of finish off this pattern, finish off our moves to the downside so that we can start to appreciate what's going on. Now, if we have, of course, truncated here, the other scenario that we need to kind of consider is a bigger wave four positioning, um, which would be that we are in a wave one, two, this is all three, this is our four, we come down into the fifth, and then we actually have a bigger five wave pattern with a five, three, five, three, five potentially. So there's so many different things going on. It's hard to kind of keep an eye on them all. But for the most part, everything I'm looking at here is basically telling me we're likely to see third to the downside. Of course, we do have uh, more common base patterns. If you are not into smart money concepts or Elliott wave theory, you do have things like inverted cup and handles potentially on the horizon as well. So things to kind of be thinking about. Um, so let's take this up into the daily time frame. Okay, so the daily time frame gives us some interesting stuff as well. We are still technically in a bullish structure from a smart money concepts point of view. As you can see, we had a change of character into a bullish state of play over here. We then had a break of structure and a break of structure confirming that we were bullish and again breaking and confirming that we were bullish. Since we've had this rally to the upside, no more indications have been shown. There's also no bearish indications here from a smart money concepts point of view outside of the fair value gap that you can see right there on the chart. That's the red area. Um, a fair value gap shows you illiquid areas in price where price basically has to kind of move on through to basically be able to transact. Um, so we can see here that this is looking very impulsive in the way that it's going down on the daily time frame. And um, so we can see right here we have the wave one, the wave two, the wave three, the wave four come down into that fifth wave movement, which is the bigger structure. Um, once complete, I would expect a bigger relief rally uh, to the upside. Coming back up into those upper areas of resistance around $43,500 would be my expectations. I would not expect at this point that swing high at $44,700 to get broken <clears throat> uh, if we do complete this five-wave pattern. If we complete the five-wave pattern, we should not go up higher than $44,700. And so we're all kind of, you know, keeping a close eye on things here. But for the most part, we are kind of looking to complete out this five-wave structure. We can also note that the stochastic RSIs are finally in a decent-ish position, meaning that we've moved from the overbought to the oversold area. This basically tells us that we've kind of seen a pretty decent amount of momentum pushing the price to the downside, but not so much that it's given us a slow stochastic RSI, meaning that this move is likely to finish soon and we'll likely find a bit of a bounce and a bit of a rally back upwards. Okay, so that's a positive sign for BTC on the daily, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to breach up higher than 44,700 before you be back up to the uh, overbought range. Ultimately, it's only showing you the strength of the movement. It's not giving you an indication as to how high price or how low price is going to go. Ultimately, it's just tracking your volume based profiles with your price action and giving you an idea as to whether or not you um, are seeing you know significant momentum downwards or maybe just a bit of momentum, but nothing too impressive to the downside in this particular case. And um, so when we take the stochastics off and we throw in our divergence indicator, we can, of course, see that we had the bearish divergence flagged up right on that fifth wave high point. And of course, from there you go down. So, you know, we are seeing a lot of really great divergences occurring here for, for Bitcoin, as we spoke about the hidden bullish divergence not that long ago. And we saw this fantastic rally to the upside of which, you know, I thought we were going to finish much sooner than we did, but we overextended. OK, that overextension with a truncated fifth wave is what we saw here within that final fifth wave movement of the expanding diagonal. Wave five is always the biggest wave when it comes to expanding diagonals. So that was also a really good sign for, for Bitcoin. Then, of 
course, we get the bearish divergence. And uh, well, the last couple of times that we had seen those, we had seen a pretty interesting correction here on BTC. In this particular case, though, we are talking about much bigger corrections overall. And we are talking about moving down into much lower prices than we have seen so far. Um, I'm personally targeting out $30,000 across the weekly and monthly timeframes. And um, so we'll be seeing how that how that kind of reacts or how price reacts to those areas. Throw the volume profiles in. I'll just zoom out just so you can kind of see a bit of the scale of this thing. OK, volumes are very, very low. There isn't a lot of volume backing these moves to the upside. Now, this is interesting to me because obviously to move price to the upside, there has to be an imbalance in the supply and the demand. If the demand is low, the only other way that you're going to see push, price push to the upside like this is to see the supply shrinking. When you take a look at the on-chain data, you can see and you can note that a lot of Bitcoin has been leaving the exchanges. Basically, what we've seen here is an imbalance in the supply, the demand metrics that allow price to move upwards by removing the supply from sale and, you know, servicing this, uh, the demand that comes in with that smaller supply prices pushed upwards. It's the only logical explanation I have as to why volumes are low, yet price has been pushing up. Now, obviously, a lot of people will throw the kind of the, the terminology of manipulation out there. Um, however, you kind of want to look at it ultimately from my point of view here with volume being low. Um, and price going up, the only way that you're going to be able to generate that is to basically shrink the supply. The only way to shrink the supply is to remove it from sale. And so we have actually got the on-chain analytics to basically show that Bitcoin has been leaving the exchanges, fueling this move to the upside. Who is pulling ex uh, Bitcoin off the exchanges? Well, that could be the manipulation part, but I'll leave that for other people to speculate on. Um, ultimately here, uh, looking at this, it looks like we are moving on down. And um, I, you know, the only way you're going to prevent this is to um, basically increase increase demand or reduce supply even further. Um, but I see retail investors basically providing more and more supply here and to bring price down. Of course, you know, since price has moved up so aggressively, maybe the people who were withdrawing the Bitcoin from the exchanges to push price up are now actually adding it back in. Uh, that will become very clear over the next few weeks as to whether or not we have a lot more significant inflows basically causing the supply and the demand imbalances. Ultimately, uh, on here, we can see and we can note that everything is looking primed for a bit of a move to the the upside, a little bit of a relief rally, but I expect further prices to the downside first. Take a look at it on the weekly time frame. We hit the upper area of our parallel channel and got rejected. So again, we're hitting those upper areas. We knew that we were going to kind of find rejection here. We've been talking about it for quite some time on the channel. This is nothing new or unexpected. The only question really that we have here is how low is it going to go? Uh, ultimately, I'm targeting out a few key areas. As I spoke about in the last few videos, we're talking 36, 37,000 as our first key area for support to be found. After that, we we're talking 30 to 31. After that, we are talking 24 to 26. And after that, 19 and a half to 21 and 800. Right. So we've got some interesting areas here. And we're not to say that we're going to visit them all. I suspect that we are going to bounce from a few of these as we kind of tumble down. Like I say, for me right now, I'm really keen to see how price goes down towards $30,000. I'm in a Bitcoin short and my my stop loss and my liquidation price is so high, it's just going to stay active for a very long time. I am that confident that we are likely to see a $30,000 Bitcoin. Ultimately, I think that's where we are going to be heading. After that, uh, if we don't react well at 30K, I am going to be targeting out the 24 to 26, and I will keep my short open for as long as I possibly can as I see potential price moves to the downside. As you can see, if we are to stick to the parallel channel here, then we are, of course, going to be looking at this next area around. 30k being the low end of that trend line uh, that we're going to be testing. We also have all those EMAs and SMAs also down coinciding in this point by the time we potentially get there. So a few things to kind of consider and keep an eye on. But for the most part, our weekly time frame is quite clear to me. Uh, we are overbought heavily. So uh, we have low volume. Uh, we haven't got any divergence indicators right now, but we are heavily overbought on the RSI as well as the stochastic RSI. Volumes are obviously decreasing as we've pushed on up, which we've spoken about, which is very unusual. Uh, ultimately, everything on the weekly chart is giving me those bearish vibes. And the same can be said on the monthly. On the monthly, we are heavily overbought. And the last time that we were this overbought, we were up at $65,000. And well, we know what happened there. Ultimately, I've been through this a couple of times. I'm looking for us to retrace about 40 to 50%, which will be pretty much in line with the monthly stochastic RSI going from the overbought to the oversold area. Um, and that is historically accurate from where we've seen. Now, it's also possible that we stay overbought for a significant period of time, like we were in two. 
2016 into 2017, right? Very possible that we do this. However, during this particular bear market uh, or bull market, we saw a lot of corrections of around 40%. So, you know, we don't just move up all the time. We can stay overbought on the stochastic RSI of the monthly, but there were healthy 40% corrections to allow us to continue our growth on the weekly timeframe and the daily timeframe, allowing the monthly to stay overbought. Because we don't have that luxury on the weekly timeframe right now, I think ultimately what we're actually going to be looking for here is going to be a 40% correction on Bitcoin. That's going to get us down to lower than $30,000, hence my short position, and why I think we're going to be seeing some pretty decent prices on the altcoins for accumulation as we kind of progress on through. Now, there's no divergence here, but we are almost overbought on the RSI as well. Last time we were overbought on the RSI, of course, was over in March of 2021 after a bull run. Okay, now, obviously, as you can see here, there's no rhythm and rhyme on the RSI side of things. We can see very healthy corrections from the same kind of levels that we're at. If we could take a look at 2019, June 2019, we saw a 53% move, not much of that RSI moved, and we're up in the same kind of area. So just be very mindful that although this is no guarantee of moves to the downside or to the upside, this is all about whether there's momentum. Taking a look at the volume profiles and taking a look at how everything is kind of stacking up, I suspect that we are haven't really got terribly too much more to be looking forward to to the upside here on the kind of medium to longer term. I think we are kind of going to see a bit of a correction to the downside. It's going to be a great opportunity to get into Bitcoin, get into the altcoins and all that kind of wonderful stuff. I'm going to leave this video right there though, guys. If you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Until the next one though, guys, have a fantastic day.